we go. All right, so what we're gonna be talking about today is meters. Meters will keep you alive, so please pay attention. We want a meter. Remember, this is overview of what we've already talked about in classes today. So I'm not, this is not, uh, you know, something I want you to be able to just take from here and go out in the field and now you're an electrician. You are not. But we want to kind of talk about what we require here um, to have a decent meter. So we talk about the CAT system. So the CAT is, you know, uh, CAT 1 would be a meter that is rated for 12 to 24 volts. A CAT 2 is your 100 amp meters. So this is basically just checking plugs, things in your house. When you get up in a Cat 3, this is where we live. We live in the Cat 3 world. It is, we want a meter that is rated to Cat 3, 600 volts. So that's everything except for the pg &E or energy provider side of the system. So this could be all your main distribution panels inside the house, all your breakers, all your plugs, all those kind of things. Your solar system, the whole deal, as long as you're not going on to the, the provider side. So we want a system that is 600 volt cat three. When we get into cat four, that's more of your commercial meters. They're dealing with voltages above that 600 volt mark, all the way up to a thousand. And we're dealing with the idea of working on the pg &E side of the meter and being able to check breakers for that kind of voltage. So we want to kind of stay away from that, okay? So the first thing we want out of our meters is cat three, 600 volts. Makes real good sense. It's super easy. That'll be on the bottom of your meter. If you look down here on the bottom of the meter, you will see a rating. And that rating on this particular one has a four, has a CAT 4 rating and a CAT uh, 3 rating. We want that minimum 600 volt CAT 3 rating. It also gives some voltages. This is my commercial meter. Big guy. Love those guys. Um, we want a meter that is true RMS. True RMS is dealing with having... Switching transformers in houses now, nowadays on TVs, things like that. Um, fluorescent light bulbs, uh, LED light bulbs, all those kind of things that throw kind of weird sense down there. It's not as big a deal for voltage as it is for amperage. So pretty much most of the meters nowadays are coming true RMS. Make sure your meter is rated for true RMS. And it will actually be listed right on the meter. Now this, like I said... Again, it will usually say true RMS, or it will be just TRMS on some of the versions. Okay, when it comes to that. Second, we want it to have a hold feature. We're going to go through all these features here in a second. Next is an AC amperage with a minimum of 200 amps. A DC amperage, which is a plus, not a requirement. The meter I recommend has that feature, but not a requirement for at least 200 amps. And I'd like to see a 400 amp rating on these guys. When we get into hertz, that's an important one. We're going to need to be able to see whether you're running 60 hertz or it's running something crazy. The next one is the upside down horseshoe or right side up horseshoe, whatever it is on your particular meter, which is your resistance feature. You have AC and DC voltage, a mandatory. And a minimum and max. Minimum and max is very, very important if you're going to do batteries, generators, all those other kind of items. So here's kind of the items I recommend we start out with here. You should have on your truck at any one day some kind of plug tester. I recommend this guy because it's really easy to read. There's no, there's no lights to read, things like that. It actually works really well. We'll talk about this a little bit at the end. Some kind of circuit finder. So you plug this guy in one area and you find the circuit with the other side. I really recommend spending a little bit of extra money and buying yourself an ideal version, a non-contact voltage tester, and some of your meters come with that. But this is one that I recommend having a standalone item and it being rated to Cat4 1000 volts. That's why I like this particular one. It will basically work for all your applications. And a clamp meter, not a meter that does not have a clamp. We want a clamp meter, something that has at least a 200 amp. And you'll sometimes see these that don't have the actual clamp themselves, but will do the 200 amp rating. This one happens to do 1,000 amps, so it's better for what I do in the commercial side of this. Now, when it comes to, um, there will be some other parts we're going to be talking about here. 
we're going to be doing, uh, those are the items we want you to have on site. So let's talk a little bit about what some of these features do. So we have our testing board here. So let's talk about the first button. This is really, really important, okay? Which is a hold feature. It pretty much comes on all of your items. So it's usually found on the side of your meter and it allows you to hold whatever's on the screen. So whatever that might be. So I turn it over to my AC and hopefully you've got a light on your meter. Um, AC amperage. We'll go ahead and clip it on. Remember, we have to either clip it on to here or use a line splitter. We're going to talk about what line splitters here are in a second. I go ahead, I flip on my light. I get that it's five point or 0.5 volts. Remember, we're using different types of, of bulbs and all that, so we want a true RMS meter. And I go ahead and I hit the hold button. I hear the beep and I take it off and it still reads the number we're actually looking for. Okay, so that's a real neat feature. So that if I'm stuck inside of a panel somewhere or, you know, I can't really get to it or I'm, I'm holding it away from me, I can hit that button and then I can pull the meter back, safely check it without having to stick my head inside the panel. Really cool feature. Now, one feature that this particular one has is that if I'm sitting there and I've got my amperage on there, I can see it from the bottom also. So this is a real neat feature. If you've got it stuffed into a panel, you can read it off the bottom here. And I'll kind of, don't know if you guys can see it or not. We'll turn off the lights here. So now we can actually read it off the bottom also. So this is the meter I recommend everybody get. For the price, under 100 bucks. It's the Ideal 61-747. Not a requirement. But it does everything we do at our company very, very well. So for all the solar industry, this is a meter that I think is just rocking as far as features to price ratio, super huge, okay? So we're gonna go ahead. Now we get into our next feature here. So our next feature is gonna be AC, DC, and that's kind of where we get into this guy here, being able to sense your AC and DC voltages. And like I said, being a true RMS meter, this is where we really, the true RMS side comes in. I'm able to detect flow through the system, okay? So this is great if you have somebody calls you up and says, hey, my breakers are tripping all day long. This is where it comes into play. So I'm able to clip it on onto, remember, we cannot clip onto both sides. We can't do neutrals and hots. You either have to do just a hot, or keep looking that way. Or we have to plug it into a line splitter, and that actually allows us to clamp the meter around it. And so we can actually don't have to separate the wires if we're doing it on like maybe a heater or something like that. So keep that in mind. I'm able to clip it around here. We're going to go ahead, turn on our light. All right, we've got it for auto ranging here. I can go ahead and flip it on, flip it on, flip it on. And now I can see we're back to that 5.5 or point. <laughs> 0.55 amps. So just under an amp for the, that kind of a situation. Works really good. And again, I can hold feature it and hold it there. Same thing for DC. So I'm able to use that symbol for AC or DC. Now the one thing I do like about this particular meter is it does say AC on the screen. Or if I flip it to DC, it says DC on the screen. That is one thing that not all meters have that is very, very important. Okay, then we get into our Hertz. Hertz is a little harder <laughs> for this particular reason. I've had a hard time kind of pulling Hertz out of these little itty bitty amounts here. So if we flip it to our voltage, amperage with, with uh, Hertz, remember we're wanting it in here more than we are. There's a couple different Hertz features on this meter, but the real one we're worrying about here, we go ahead and flip it on. We go ahead and hit the select button. That takes us to Hertz. And right now it's showing us nine Hertz because there's not enough flow through this with just these couple of light bulbs to even do anything. So let's see. So yeah, but normally that would be a 60 Hertz rating and that would help us kind of know where we have. And again, it disappears when we have that. So a Hertz rating is only for AC. It's a super important feature. 
we want to be able to see that things are running at 60 hertz. It's a little hard for the setup we have here, but out in the field, you'll see 60 hertz, okay? Then we get into our uh, resistance rating or our ohms rating. That will be the little horseshoe on this particular one. You'll see the horseshoe. Before we use it, we want to make sure we set the meter. So we're going to take our two tips. We're going to put them together. And we want to see something. Now this is showing point. Let's see if I can get these guys to do it here. and We'll hold it. Okay. So it's holding at a point two. We want to see something point something is where we want to be at. Now, this does have the feature of the triangle, not a necessity by any means, but that's a zeroing feature, and that will take care of the, the actual resistance of your leads. So remember, with distance of wire, your leads are distance of wire, and it will have a percentage of that resistance built into the wires themselves. You can tear that just like you would on a scale with that triangle button or the relative or on flukes, they have the zeroing button. All those kind of help get that down if you're doing trying to do some really precise measurements. For us, anything below point something, really good below point five is right where you want to be. So that's kind of where we want to be. We're at point two. I can live with that. I could probably straighten out my leads a little bit and get a little closer, but not the end of the world. I'm going to go ahead and reset it. LO or OL for overload means that there's so much resistance it can't even tell. This is really useful for, um, for fuses. You're working on air conditioners, you're working on, on a fusible disconnect. I go ahead and slam it in there. It tells me that we have some resistance here and we're at 0.5. This fuse is good to go, okay? Now we actually can take this one and hit the select button and we get into kiliohms and it takes out the sound so if that sound drives you nuts, you can take that away. We go ahead and click it on. Now it's going to do a real, real precise resistance rating. And it's showing that it's 0.1, a really, really good rating. Again, if we touch our leads together at the end to make sure we're not having any weird ratings, 0.1 is a great rating for an ohms rating here, showing that that, that particular fuse is good to go. Okay? Our next item is going to be our AC and DC voltage. This is, comes into play. We can do this with our line splitter here. This we get in here. We can open up our test leads a little bit. Remember, not only do we want our, our meters to be rated for that 600 volt, we also want our meters to be rated for, or our leads to be rated for that. So the only ones, if you take the caps off and throw away those caps that come with them, these are no longer rated to cat three. They're only rated to cat two. So if you've got a meter that has caps on your leads and I pull them off and I lose that cap, this is no longer a rated item. It's down to cat two and is no longer sufficient for the environment we're in. So we only pull those off when we need to get into something, this particular item. We only need a type two rating for it because we're only gonna do 120 volts. We're gonna go ahead and stick our leads inside here. This will allow us to get our AC voltage. And if we move it over here to AC voltage, remember this one goes to AC. Now this particular meter beeps when it's had full voltage over 70 volts, gives you a red light indicator. And if we turn on the light, it tells us we have 121.2 volts. And you know, as you can see here, it's in the line splitter. That's a real neat way to do it. So you don't have to shove your, your prongs into your, inside your, uh, your plug there. Sometimes that's really hard nowadays with tamper resistant, things like that. And again, we can test and make sure it's working good. Go ahead and flip off the switch. We lose our voltage. Remember, it's gonna auto range. We turn it back up. It's gonna tell us that we have the red light here telling us we have voltage. It beeps for us, tells them we have over that normal safe voltage, and we get into 121 volts. Now, once we've done that, we can go ahead and get into the next one, which I think is really important, which is a DC voltage rating that has negative volts, okay? 
So we're gonna go ahead and check this battery right here. So you guys can see it's just a regular old Ryobi battery, but it's really easy to test these guys again. I'm gonna lower my leads down to the minimum I need, or the maximum I need to work with the situation I have now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my meter. This one comes up as AC first. Some meters actually have an AC and DC monitor on here. This one requires me to hit select. I hit select. I take my leads, I put them on here. I let it set, this is 20.6 volts or 20.5 volts. Now here's the really important part. Now, so if we look at the screen here, I put it on there the right way and I get a positive number of 20 volts. If I flip my leads or put my black on the positive, I really want that negative number to come up there. And so if you'll zoom in real quick here, I want you to see right here, right above the DC, you'll get a negative number. In solar, this is super, super important. Okay, now that I have that number there, I can go ahead and I can either take a picture of that or I can hit the hold button and get my picture, whatever that may be. So then it jumps around. Again, this is a place where the relative button can help with getting it a little closer. It'll zero it out for you, not a necessity. The other thing I want people to see here when we're on DC, it says M voltage, millivolts or one thousandth of a volt. Sometimes you'll get a rating when you're on solar and you'll see a, a rating up here that says voltage and you're like, oh, I'm getting voltage, but it's like 35 volts. And you're like, how is that possible? I only have 10 panels on the roof. If you see the millivolt range, it is not reading anything but a thousandth of a volt. So that could be miswired. That could be a situation where you have reverse polarity. All those kind of things will sometimes cause that to happen. Usually it's from miswiring. So that's kind of a sign that you may have some miswiring on the roof. Now the ranging button here allows us to range. You know, if I, don't, if I thought it was less than 10 volts, I could put it here and it holds a little tighter so I'm not constantly getting that skipping around. If I think it's less than 99 volts, I can go one dot over. One decimal over, if I think it's less than a thousand, you know, 999 volts, I can go the three over. So if we're doing something with 250 volts on the roof or 400 volts on the roof, again, right where we want to be. Okay, so that allows us to range back and forth. Now, our last one is going to be the min-max rating. This is really, really important, okay? Now, the min-max rating, we're going to have to go back over here to AC. Uh, volt or amperage and this is where we find it most useful this is if we're trying to find out what the LRA of an air conditioner really is or if we're trying to find out whether we can run an air compressor or some kind of item on a uh, unit like let you know we want to put it on batteries or a generator whatever it is we want to find out what that max voltage is okay so we're going to plug in a skill saw here and sorry this is going to be a little noisy but we'll try to catch it as we're doing it, okay? So what we're going to do, one thing I do recommend is whatever you think the amperage is going to be, range it all the way out. So I range it all the way out so I have the ability to have 900, you know, amps. You're never going to get there. And we're going to go ahead and start the saw here. <laughs> Sorry about that guys, the only thing I have that's powerful enough to make this measurement here. So we have five amps is what it's running at. That's what it's running at. Now let's find out what it took to start this item. So we're gonna hit the hold feature again. It's gonna reset us. We're gonna go back down here. We have, it, we have it ranged all the way out as hard as we can. We don't want it on auto range. We wanna hit max. This is gonna tell us what it's gonna run at, at the max when we pull the trigger or when the air conditioner starts, or when the refrigerator starts, all those kind of items, what that's gonna be, okay? So we're gonna start it up, so there's gonna be noise again, sorry guys. This tells us our max out number here, where we're at, of 23 amps to start it. So it ran at five amps. This is where you get the crazy numbers we have on air conditioners. It may be, 30 amps to run it, 175 amps to get it started. A refrigerator may be two or three amps to run. It may be, you know, 20 amps with, a, with an ice maker to run. So kind of keep that in mind, guys. 
Then we get into some kind of honorable mentions down here. Remember, we want to use the three-step process whenever we're testing items here. So one other item I recommend if you're into the higher end stuff here is getting into a proofing unit because we want to always test our equipment over here. So we're going to be headed testing our equipment today. So we want to set our stuff to AC voltage. This is a proofing unit. It will do AC and DC voltage. So what we're going to do, try to get all of my leads out of the way here. We can go ahead. We're going to put our leads in here and this gives us Oops. Oh, I've got it set to DC. Sorry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. Gives me 242 volts. That's what it's set to. And I know that my meter's working properly. And now I can go ahead and perform an action and then come back in a three step method. Go ahead and click it again and make sure the meter's working properly. So I can do the same thing with DC. Just hit the select button. And I go ahead and do it again for DC, 240 volts DC. So that's a really neat feature, plus it comes with a little magnet on it. These are made by Fluke. I highly recommend getting a proofing unit. That way you don't have to constantly go find a plug somewhere to test. If I'm up on a roof and I'm testing an air conditioner or testing a solar system up there, I can do that by testing it, making sure it's dead, and then performing my work. Okay? A couple other honorable mentions here. A heat laser gun. Definitely something I recommend, okay? When we get into the idea here with a second set of leads in case your leads go bad, these guys allow you to clip on to live wires and work on them. And then here, you can just basically unscrew this and screw it into a light bulb circuit. So if you got a light bulb you're trying to work on, you can't find out where it goes to. You don't want to turn off the whole, you know, turn off the whole house five times a day. Just get this guy, plug it in. And then you'll have to have a uh, set of these, these guys here allow you to go down to a two prong instead of a three prong. Remember on your meters, you're only getting it one of your lights. A really nice headlamp, worth its weight in gold, a set of clamps. I use these a lot when I'm working on uh, solar edge systems, when I'm checking voltages, checking my VOC. I can clamp onto them. I can go ahead and set my meter, take my picture with everything in the picture working properly, and I'm good to go. Highly recommend that. And then one of these type of plug-in testers that I don't have to read, it basically will tell me whether the circuit's open, my voltages, everything else for 20 bucks, well worth its weight in gold. So as always, guys, um, have a great day. This is really, really important stuff. If you're working on any solar systems, you're working on electrical around your house, you should have these items, and you need to make sure the ratings are for what you're using. Really, most situations for the homeowner, for the basic person out there doing solar or anything else in the residential side, that Cat 3 600 volt rating works just fine. If you're gonna work in a commercial, make sure you're going and getting those equipment that's designed for commercial. Have a great day, guys. Thank you very much for looking in.